Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. Seems the cryptocurrency market has been slightly sliding back from its recent kind of recovery pump here. At XRP sitting at 32 cents and Bitcoin sliding below 20k. Um, again, a lot of speculation, a lot of words being thrown around on Twitter that, oh, it's now a bear market or no, we're just in the retracement. Honestly, we just got to ride out the rest of this year and see what happens because throughout history uh, we've had times where bitcoin was going down or doing absolutely nothing and xrp becomes top dog of the cryptocurrency space or as we should say uh, top g and uh absolutely melts faces and runs like crazy on a ten thousand percent plus pump so i'm still optimistic here um let's go ahead and zoom out on the bitstamp chart and see what we got going on here. There's something I've been looking forward to on the weekly chart. I believe it is now currently coming into play. We have old XRP all-time high. Potentially being the new launch pad for breaking new all-time high. As you can see, it looks like XRP is trying to go for the double bottom here on the weekly. In which we will see a liquidity grab filling up all these gaps essentially all the way up to about a dollar per coin. That's what I'm looking for here. We are currently at a major, major zone. Old all-time high, old bear market support, old bear market resistance, and became the resistance level which we broke through to nearly reach all-time high. That's why this level is very key here. It is essentially a very, very old resistance dating all the way back to 2017. And we are now currently using this as a double bottom, I think, to ramp up further because the market always wants to fill in the gaps if you look back here we really don't have any significant gaps down here for the whales to go and grab but what we do have here is billions of dollars sitting uh right here with stop losses i've had people come in the comments and ask me like hey alex what is a gap can you explain what a gap is a gap is when you know look so the market um it really wants to move like this right markets want to move like this that's what i think would be considered kind of healthy is moving like that so what a gap is is when the market does not move in like this kind of formation which is more healthy it moves in something like this just straight elevator down and that's what you're seeing right here is you know since this terra luna stuff happened we went from 86 cents complete elevator down to 32 cents so what you have is a major gap right here, which has billions of dollars of liquidity sitting of stop losses and people still currently in leverage trade. So what I'm thinking is going to happen, we're going to get this double bottom right here. Big boys are going to go for a liquidity grab while all of cryptocurrency Twitter is calling for a bear market. And one last thing I'd like to state is that markets love to move in like legs. For example, right here. It's going to have one leg, second leg, and then move. Same thing when it tops out. See, like one leg, second leg, and then moves down, right? Market loves to move in legs. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into the headlines of today, guys. This just came out yesterday from CZ Binance. The future is here. Visa, MasterCard, and Binance are suddenly making Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Solana, Cardano, and Tether payments a reality. I would love to read through this article with you guys, but Forbes, um, they don't like that I'm using an ad blocker. Then I turn off the ad blocker, and then what happens is, uh, yeah, you literally can't read the thing. But what's funny is you can keep refreshing the page and kind of go down and be able to kind of sneak in a little sneak in a little paragraph right here, like this last part. So you can see, like, now um, card and payments giant MasterCard has announced a partnership with the world's biggest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, to launch Bitcoin and crypto payments in-store and online, while MasterCard rival uh, Visa has also seen a ramping up of its crypto payment card. So we are sort of seeing a boom here. And they are including XRP in this, which is making me think that we might have a, you know, Binance XRP relisting um, in the future. Okay. Another thing, Binance is really moving pretty forward lately on the offense. Um, they just did this a few days ago. Uh, Binance signs a MOU with the city of Busan to further foster blockchain industry development. Um, and, and the thing is that in, in Korea... With Ripple and XRP, we do have a lot of big partnerships with banks such as Shinon and Worry Bank. And I know there's a few others, actually, 
Um, I actually do have this little interesting uh, specimen here, the unofficial RippleNet and ODL Asia and Middle East map. And you can see from South Korea, we got Daily, Financial Group, Coin One, Senpi, Shinon, Worry, Hanpass, GME, Remittance. So we do got a lot of partnerships over there. So it's kind of interesting to me that Binance is moving pretty forward with, uh, I believe, Korea's second largest city. Uh, if you guys haven't been to Busan before, crazy place, dude. The traffic is insane. You get into a taxi, man. The thing's like a roller coaster. Uh, people will run red lights, like like the green lights. It's it's a crazy place over there, but I love it and absolutely miss it. Um, I would say it's kind of like a, I don't know, sort of like a LA of Korea, maybe. It's it's a crazy place. You guys have to see it. Great food, great people. But again, is crazy though, especially at the train station. Man, you'll see some weird people out there, but honestly, amazing place. And I do miss it. So, uh, Binance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Memorandum of Understanding with the City of Busan and South Korea. As part of the agreement, the City of Busan will receive technological and infrastructure support from Binance for the development of the city's blockchain ecosystem and promotion of the Busan Digital Asset Exchange. Another form of cooperation between the two parties will be order book sharing. Binance plans to develop and foster Busan City's blockchain sector in several ways, utilizing Busan's blockchain regulatory free zone to promote blockchain initiatives and businesses, supporting blockchain related research and investments in the city, providing specialized blockchain education and online resources from Binance Academy. So essentially with this country, um, let's just put it this way. They love to do everything fast. I don't care what you do over in Korea. Everywhere you go, things are fast, efficient, and quick, and that is exactly exactly the message with xrp everything fast quick efficient and that's exactly how this country operates but yeah guys i want to kind of go over this specimen more with you um you know it's an unofficial map but still this is based on you know public information that is you know real and is out there and can really give you guys an idea of how many partnerships we really have in a visualized sense I mean, look at over here in like Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, India, Saudi Arabia, um, over here in Turkey, over here in South Korea, Japan, Philippines. I mean, even in China, which is, you know, for an American company, kind of very hard to get into, but still partnered with the third largest um, payments company in China, the Lian Lian Pay. It, it, it's crazy to really visualize how much progress we have truly made. And this map, you can't do with any other cryptocurrency. You truly can't. No other cryptocurrency is partnering with this many banks. All right. I mean, even over here in Russia, ZamZam, UBS, Moscow, Bank of Russia, question mark. I believe there was some Russia ties we made videos on in the past. I mean, dude, you got Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, SCB Bank. I mean, you just got tons and tons of banks that are all lining up to use RippleNet, right? So last little one for today, guys. As you guys may have remembered, we had over here on the XRP Daily uh, breaking Forbes hit piece, Gary Gensler must resign. And they literally, from Forbes, titled the article just three words, Gary Gensler resign. That was the whole entire title of the article. It went in-depth. It went deep. It talked about how policy to serve SEC insiders, not the rule of law. Um, so even though the article has been wiped, the article has been taken down. I mean, you got to understand this is coming from a pretty, you know, huge media giant, which um, I'd imagine behind the scenes, you got people in their pockets. They've got people they owe favors to. They got people that they're, you know, in deep connections with because mainstream media, it's the reality is, is like they're not doing what they're doing for you. They have their own agendas at play. They have their own connections. They're pushing out things for a very certain reason, and they pushed out something that was basically for the people, essentially, which was calling out the SEC. Gensler's SEC demands complex, bewildering disclosures on how financial assets affect the weather, develops discriminatory rules without procedure and input, and applies regulation not by rule of law, but caprice. He rejects constitutional checks and balances, bristling at congressional oversight, which dares to question new SEC environmental, social, and governance orthodoxy. He weaponizes the SEC's war on cryptocurrency by claiming that every digital asset is probably a security. The SEC has not developed forthright policy on cryptocurrency, and Congress has not instructed it to do so, and commissioners have never voted on a position. But Gensler nonetheless urges startups to come in and talk to us about getting registered. The agency's Freedom of Information Act office uh, flippantly rejects investors' good faith requests for clarity and information. And shocker, 
it gets wiped off the internet and that article is gone. You can still check out the XRP Daily if you want to get some you know, pretty good excerpts from the article. But they wiped the thing down and then they had to come up with a new one. Um, her name was uh, Dr. Layton who wrote the article and the title was flat out Gary Gensler resign. But now it's been wiped off the internet and they had to make a new one. Gensler says crypto treated like the market. Gensler says crypto treated just like the market. 200 SEC lawsuits says otherwise. So it's, you know, it's just kind of funny how when you really try to go after the powers that be, they try to censor you and shut you down. Just like, you know, everyone watching this video, we are all together in the XRP army. Every single week or month, it seems like coming out with new information, digging up dirt on the SEC officials that partook in ETHgate. And what are they trying to do? The SEC is trying to get rid of John Deaton and the 70,000 XRP holders he represents in the court case trying to completely remove them from the case. So we are being attacked by some pretty pretty strong people, pretty influential people that can, you know, make one phone call and have a whole Forbes article taken down. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. That's the kind of people who we are exposing. And that's the exact people we are going to defeat in the court of law. Thank you guys for tuning in the video today. I really appreciate it. Do smash the likes and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.